Hello and welcome to the Student Balloon Launch Live. We are so excited about this today. I'm Marty Kelsey, I'm one of the hosts of STEM and 30, an Emmy-nominated TV show produced by the National Air and Space Museum. And we've got a really fun, interesting show for you today. Before we get rolling into a lot of it, I wanna remind everybody watching, let us know where you're watching from. If you're with a school, let us know the school and your teacher's name, and we'll try to give you a shout out during the show. Um, if you've got some questions, throw them in there. I don't know if we'll have time to get to a lot of questions, but please let us know where you're watching from. We are launching balloons today from all across the country. I'm at Sterling Middle School right now, but we have teachers in Washington, D.C., here in Sterling, and all across the United States, including Alaska, and they will all be launching balloons here in just a few minutes. Now, these just aren't normal balloons. You can probably see the balloon back behind me. It's, uh, it looks like a big party balloon, but what's really cool about these balloons, they're gonna stay in the air for a couple of weeks. They're gonna get to altitudes of 30,000 feet or so, and they're gonna make it all the way to Europe. Um, these are called mid-altitude balloons, um, and uh, so they're going to stay up for a long, long time. It's a Mylar 36-inch balloon. They're filled with helium, and they have a little satellite on them. Now, that satellite that you see on them is really cool because it is really crazy light. It's the, about the weight of a AAA battery, um, so under 12 ounces, um, and it has guitar string antennas that will connect it to a ham radio. Um, each chip on the satellite is coded to a specific ham radio. You'll see our ham radio operator here behind us. They turned them on last night so that they could uh, start charging up. They are solar powered. Um, they, they got the charge, they pinged off of the ham radio, and that's what's going to allow us to track them and allow you to track them for the next couple weeks as they make their way across the country and across the ocean. Um, and we'll talk about the tracking here in just a little bit. Um, one of the things that we wanna make sure that you understand today is how a gas balloon works, because that's the whole thing going on here is this is a gas balloon that we're gonna release. So let's learn a little bit more about how a gas balloon works. Hydrogen and helium are two gases that are lighter than air. Most balloonists in the United States use helium. Although helium is slightly heavier than hydrogen, helium is non-flammable. Once the balloon is filled with enough helium and the combined weight of the balloon and gas becomes lighter than air, the balloon will float. In order to make the balloon rise, the pilot will drop sandbags, reducing the total weight of the balloon. In order to descend, the pilot pulls a rope to open a valve on the top of the balloon. This allows some gas to escape, making the balloon heavier and causing it to lose altitude. All right, well, if you thought that animation was cool, you should be sure to check out the latest episode of STEM in 30. It came out earlier in the week, or last week, um, and it talks all about hot air balloons, gas balloons, high altitude balloons, including Alan Eustace's jump from the stratosphere. So be sure to check out that uh, episode. We'll put the, the link down in the comments section. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, we are joined by teachers from around the country, and they're all gonna be launching balloons today. And we're gonna check in with them throughout the day. So uh, we've got Caroline Little in St. Paul, Minnesota. And I'm gonna say they're ham call signs because that's important for the tracking. So she is K-E-O, I-Y-F, um, we've got uh, Nick Chrissy in Sutherland, Oregon. His call sign is W-A-7-R-I-G. Uh, Michelle Ron in Claremore, Oklahoma, K-E-5-B-O-R. And we'll be checking in with Michelle here in just a little bit to see how the weather is in uh, Oklahoma. We've got Jessica Sadler from Lawrence, Kansas. N-O-T-F-U is her call sign. We have Amy Ollerton in Provo, Utah, KG7KYW, and you're going to get a chance to meet Amy here in just a few minutes because not only is she a teacher that's launching a balloon, she's also the ham radio operator that'll be tracking it. A lot of the sites have a separate teacher um, and a separate ham radio operator, but she's doing double duty today. We have Krista Williams from, from Cordova, Alaska. She is KL4DL. Now, unfortunately, 
Alaska's got a little bit of rough weather this morning, a little bit of rain, a little bit of high wind. And uh, we've seen just some light winds here really bat the balloon around. So they're going to delay their launch until later, but we are able to check in with her and, uh, and see the weather there. We've got Trevor McNuff in Richland, Washington, KS1 LAS. Um, he's done a ton of work in the background. We really want to thank Trevor for helping truly get this program off the ground today. So uh, hopefully there's clear skies there in Richland, Washington. We have Mike Crowley from the Academies of Loudoun, KD4KWL. Um, we have Raymond Hamilton at Hart Middle Schools in Washington, D.C. NW3DC is his call sign. Anthony Davinzo De at Johnson Middle School in D.C. And right here at Sterling Middle, Middle School, we have Raji Ganguly. Raji, give us a wave back there. She is ready to launch this balloon, and we've worked with Raji before. She is an incredible teacher, um, as are all of these teachers that are launching from across the country today. Um, we also want to give a great shout out to Jack um, and Audrey, who are an 11th and a 7th grader. They are doing their own balloon launch today, and one of the cool things about them, they reached out to us when they found out with, that we were doing this. They do balloon launches on their own, which is cool in itself, but they also use that to help teach other students about balloons and about science. So Jack and Audrey, thank you for ex inspiring the next generation of explorers. You guys are doing great work. Hopefully your launch goes really, really well today. Um, now I mentioned earlier that each of the uh, satellites is coded to a specific ham radio call sign. Uh, they're all coded in um, in advance. And so they will be able to track the GPS coordinates and I think temperature on these satellites. And that's about all that they do because they are so small and so light. And as I mentioned earlier, and I lost the battery, it was in my pocket, they weigh about that much. So these are super light satellites um, and we'll see this thing go up uh, here in just a few minutes. Um, but to get us started, I wanna learn a little bit more about ham radio and how it's involved in this project because if it weren't for ham radio, we wouldn't be able to be doing this launch and be able to track them for as long as we can. So let's head over to Beth Wilson, my co-host on STEM and 30 with Amy Allerton, ham radio operator and teacher innovator institute teacher to learn more about ham radio. Today, we are joined by Amy Ollerton, who is part of the Teacher Innovator Institute at the National Air and Space Museum. Amy, thank you so much for being here. Hi, Beth, you're welcome. Amy, what is a ham radio? Is it a radio made out of ham? <laughs> uh, that would be cool, but no, it's not. A ham radio is like amateur radio. My ham radio is like a handheld so it's like the size of a walkie-talkie. So it's just however you interact with the radio waves. And what what do ham radio waves do that like my transistor radio doesn't do? You can like receive radio waves. You can listen to anything that's out there, but I can like transmit and talk to people like all over the world, basically. One thing that's really cool is you can even talk to the International Space Station with a ham radio. And how does that work? Radio waves basically, like from my radio, they get sent to a transmission tower and that tower can send them out to other repeaters. And then through those repeaters, I can talk to people like around the country, around my state. Amy, it must be really, really cool to talk to folks around the world. How did you get into ham radio? So growing up, there were a lot of people in my neighborhood who did ham um, and you could see towers outside their houses. So people that get really into it, you can see antenna like on their houses. And so seeing those and kind of being interested in like, I wonder what those are for and talking to people in my neighborhood. One of the guys in my neighborhood had like a notebook, Beth, and he had postcards in it from like every person he'd talked to in other countries, they sent him a postcard. And I thought that was so cool that you could like talk to anyone and it wasn't on a telephone and you didn't have to like, you didn't know what they looked like, which I thought that was really cool. And so I got into it from talking to other people who did it. Now, I know in the movie Contact, the character that Jodie Foster played uh, was an avid ham radioist. What does that have to do with space? Radio waves can like, travel super far. So with space, I believe like the Voyager and the Pioneer um, spacecraft that were sent out in like the 70s or 60s, they're still sending us back information like through radio waves. That's totally cool. Amy, 
tell us something that a lot of people wouldn't know about ham radio operators. Sure. So a lot of hams are so into the hobby that they even get their license plate named after them. So when I say that, I mean that as a ham, you have a call sign. And so you can get your call sign printed on your license plate. So if you see a license plate that starts with the letter K or the letter W, that's a ham licensed person in most cases. Amy, how did you get your call sign slash license plate number? <laughs> uh, good question, Beth. So I signed up for a class and it was like one day class, eight hours of studying, and then I took the test. And I actually failed it a couple times, but they let me retake it. They let anyone retake it several times on the same day. Tell us about the connection between ham radio and this balloon launch we have coming up. Yeah, sure. So the balloons that we're going to be launching have like a, I think it's like a microchip, but my call sign is going to be connected to mine so that we can track where the balloon's at. So all the teachers or people launching balloons also have a ham radio license and with the license you get a call sign and so we're able to track the data like with those call signs. Thank you Amy so much for talking to us today. Of course you're welcome. All right well I was just able to get an update and we have folks watching from not only all over the country but all over the world as well. We've got Missouri, New York, Ohio, Colorado, Texas, Massachusetts, Rivers Edge High School in Washington, uh, Arizona, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Winchester, North Carolina, Alabama, New Jersey, Florida, Maryland, and here are some of the cool ones. Brazil, Nepal, Italy, Thailand, Belgium, Uruguay, Poland, Ukraine, Germany, the Philippines, and France. Also, we've had three folks let us know their ham radio call signs, KC9STR, WA9RD, and N4BWR. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. We really, really appreciate it. Um, now we've got, uh, you can see there's some activity going on back here. They're working on the balloon. The ham radio is all connected. Um, we're getting ready to launch here in just a little bit. I wanna talk to you a little bit before we do about how you can track these balloons. You can go online to Hab Hub and we'll put the links down in the comments section and you can follow along. Now on Hab Hub, I know it'll take a, a couple of hours to get the coordinates up there. Um, you may be able to already see them and put them in there. Also, there are websites, teachers that you can use to track winds. And we also have some incredible previews of what these balloons might be able to do. Um, I saw one of the previews earlier from today from our balloon in Alaska. And I don't know if this prediction will stay true since they're gonna launch later in the day, but the prediction earlier was that it was gonna go out towards Russia for a while, and then it was gonna loop back around and travel along the Northern United States until it got to about the Great Lakes. And then it was gonna do this big old loop-de-loop -loop and then head out over the, uh, the ocean. So it'll be interesting to see how the predictions that we've made are going to follow through with the actual tracks of these balloons and something really cool that your students can do in their classroom is follow along with these balloons. Um, so we're really looking forward to you doing that and we may have an update here in a few days on how they're doing because like I said earlier, these things are going up to 30 or 40,000 feet. They're going to be aloft for two weeks and they're going to go all the way across the ocean. I cannot wait to see where these things end up. Um, but before we launch, I want to check in with one of our remote sites. Michelle Ron is a teacher in Oklahoma. Michelle, do you hear me? How are things there? Hi, Marty. How's, how's it going, Michelle? Tell us what's going on with your launch there. Michelle, I think you might be muted. How about now? Can you hear me now? Now we got you, Michelle. Okay, Good job. Perfect. How's yes, it going? It's going great. We're in Claremore, Oklahoma. Um, we are home of astronaut Stuart Russo, Apollo 14. So we're pretty excited about this launch today. The weather's cleared up and um, we have been doing a lot of um, research on these balloons with my students. We are excited to include this <clears throat> authentic data into our classroom. And so we have partnered with a local meteorologist, a big shout out to Karen Hatfield at the National Weather Service in Tulsa. So she's gonna meet with my students as well. And a big shout out to my kiddos, to my students, 
and sixth grade sixth graders at Will Rogers Junior High. So we're excited, Marty. Back to you. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. It looks like you guys have got clear skies. And I've got to say, we have absolutely incredibly beautiful weather here today. We get the occasional gust of wind, which you see knocking the balloon around, and we're getting ready to launch. Um, I do want to give a couple more shout outs real quick. Good Shepherd Catholic Montessori in Cincinnati, um, Paraguay, France, the Philippines, Germany, Lancaster. They're excited and they're watching. Um, so we've got a whole bunch of folks tuning in, and I think we're about ready to launch. So are you all ready to launch back there? All right, remote sites, I think we're getting ready. So here we go, we're just about ready. Give everybody a second to get ready to let go of their balloons, let our camera guy make sure that he's ready to go. All right, we're gonna launch in five, four, three, two, one, let her go. There it goes the exact opposite way we had predicted earlier. <laughs> if you're near Sterling, Virginia, look out your window and see if you see it go by and you get bonus points if you snap a picture of it. Oh, let's get a little lift going. Looks like we've got good launches from across the country. I'm seeing other feeds. Oh, this is cool. That is really cool that a balloon that size is going to make it all the way across the ocean and in some cases all the way across the country and then across the ocean uh, aloft for two weeks. Absolutely amazing, amazing stuff. Um, Really awesome work. Can we still see it, Ryan? We still got a shot of it. Looks like we cleared the hurdle of the trees, which we were a little bit nervous about. A half hour before the launch, we were talking about, you know, which way was the balloon gonna go? And we were real worried it was gonna blow right back at the camera. We were also a little bit worried that there was a flock of geese on our field this morning that they were gonna attack the balloon before it took off, but they left earlier and it looks like our balloon is well on its way. So make sure you follow the balloon. Um, teachers, if you're doing a project similar to this, or if you use this balloon data in your classroom, please let us know. We would love to know of how you're using this type of activity in your classroom so that we can share that with other teachers around the country. Um, I do want to, before we wrap up today, I wanna to give a few thanks to people that are behind the scenes. We've got Giuliano and John and Devin who are doing some remote tech for us. Uh, we've got a couple of interns named Lexi. Both of them are doing awesome stuff on social media. Some of the Air and Space Museum staff, Beth, Laura, Nicole, Julie, Katie, uh, Julia, Katie, Machen, uh, Barb, Shannon, who runs our Teacher, Inno Teacher Innovator Institute program has done just an amazing job wrangling all of these teachers. Um, also another thanks to Trevor McDuff and Bill Brown for introducing this project to the museum and helping us literally get off the ground today. Thank you guys for all of your work. And I just wanna wrap up and I wanna thank all of the teachers out there. If you watch this in your classroom today, um, please know that you inspire every single one of us at the National Air and Space Museum every day. I know this year is unlike any that you've ever had before. I can't even imagine. I taught for 17 years. I cannot imagine what it would be like to be in a classroom this year. But we thank you so much for your work because you truly are inspiring that next generation generation of explorers. Thanks for watching.